Welcome everybody, yeah, so yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's fine for a second I thought my Dota is not registered in my OBS, but it's good guys And this is of course gonna be the first game of a really extremely long group stage It is energy pacemaker going up against team Braveheart in this two game series best of two However, you want to name this but it's two games minimum maximum both of those but It's gonna be a round robin eight teams going up against each other of course and all the teams even advance to the playoffs as well so lots of games to be had in the group stage and then a double elimination playoff bracket on top of that. But of course we're here for TV, your English coverage. I'm Coucher. I'm going to be joined by Grandis V as well. Do you have any favorites coming into this game? Into this game, I'd probably say Energy Pacemaker is slightly favorited, especially now that they pick up the little Shrek. One of the heroes that we don't get to see very often is he's usually just flat out banned. I'm honestly super surprised that... Braveheart ban out the Ancient Apparition, I think. Ancient Apparition is much less scary than all this track. Even if you are looking to pick up something like a Huskar or Necrophos Slark, one of these heroes, it gets very much shut down by the Ancient Apparition Ultimate. It's not something that you're going to see first pick very often. And um, Yeah, I think that's a little bit questionable, at least to me. But in general, I think Energy Pacemaker are a little bit better of a team, but maybe a tad inconsistent. There definitely is the possibility for an upset. We're going to start things off for Team Braveheart with a Storm Spirit Earthshaker and follow up the Lesh with a Rubik. Yeah, I mean, so now they at least have some form of setup for the Lesh. And this also means that they might even just throw a curveball of sorts, run the Lesh as the support role, just roam around together with the Rubik, easy telekinesis into split earth combinations. And of course, in general, Rubik is going to be nice with that just point click stun up against Storm Spirit, all lightning in by Storm Spirit suddenly your telekinesis up, follow up stuns there. So, Storm Spirit may have a game and he's just kind of forced to go into a BKB sooner or later at least, depending on what energy pacemaker wants to draft afterwards, but next set of bands, a Lycan also banned out by energy pacemaker. Yeah, very interesting. Energy Pacemaker seems scared of Team Braveheart going for some really early aggressive pushes with the Lycanthrope and Pogna, but we still have a lot of S-Class tier heroes available inside the pool, like Tusk, Winter Wyvern, um, and heroes that are at that same level. It's very interesting to see um, so many of them slip through, in all honesty. Huh. I mean, I have to say, I haven't seen Team Braveheart all that much, but... By the bands of energy pacemaker you would think that they kind of like to run like early to mid game push heavy lineups with the like and the pagna both being banned of course pagna is definitely good against the leshrek as well with the ward but i'm not sure if it's worthy to ban it out but oh braveheart a juggernaut pickup i mean built-in magic immunity is never going to be a bad thing absolutely not but uh, even so i think it's a tad early to be picking up the jug He's very good at killing off the Lish Rack if he can get on top of the Lesh, but this game, there's more than enough time for Energy Pacemaker to draft around that fact and build Lesh some sort of tanky front line or just really quick initiation to stop the Jug from being able to accomplish that. And Yule Scepter, Ghost Scepter from the Lesh is going to stop a lot of what Braveheart are bringing to the table when it comes to actually killing him off and focusing him before he's able to get his nukes through. Earthshaker and Mid's going to help out a lot when dealing with the Lesh, but... Yeah, this is this is already pretty problematic. Energy Pacemaker, I think the draft is looking to be their favorite. You mean, to be honest, I, I must say that it is uncanny how often I see Leshrac in the mid lane up against Storm Spirit, who is backed up by an Earthshaker. For it, sure. It, it just feels like Earthshaker and Storm Spirit, they're so often going to be going up against the Lesh, but oh, Energy Pacemaker. Gonna go for a Bloodseeker here, a hero that isn't all that uncommon these days. I'm not too sure if that's a good or a bad thing, I guess it's like preference for everybody, but Bloodseeker, if he can land that silence on the Storm Spirit, it's gonna be excellent, and the same with the Chuggernaut, but getting it to land, you need those just stuns to land from your teammates beforehand. Yeah, absolutely, and the Rubik and Lash can offer that setup. Um, can very easily chain stun down a Storm Spirit or Juggernaut alike, but both those heroes are very lucid. If you don't get the chain stun perfectly, you either ball out if you're the Storm or just Blade Fury and run if you're the Jug. That is if you're not ruptured, which very well might happen in this game. Uh, for Team Braveheart, hmm, what exactly do they need as their next support? I think something like a Lino would definitely not go amiss. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Magic, man. Magic. Uh, not really. It's just a generally really good hero here. Um, a lot of nuke damage against Bloodseeker unless you really do want that high amount of burst to take them out of the fights because if you give Lash your Bloodseeker an inch, they'll take a mile. 
but the timing couldn't have been more perfect. You said Lina, <laughs> and you like summoned that hero for the team, I have to say. Absolutely. But energy pacemaker now, we'll see how they want to kind of combat this or... I mean, they could definitely use PKBs themselves now, seeing all that Team Braveheart has to offer. Of course, PKB isn't gonna guarantee safety, especially if Lina gets an... Laguna Blade somewhere along the line, but if this is a support to Lina, which it probably will be, that Agony Scepter is probably going to be coming out rather late unless they have a really just magical time early on. As an Edge Pacemaker, gonna go for a Dragon Knight, so more and more it feels like this might be a support Lash. Or it could also be a Jungle Bloodseeker. There are a couple of options for Energy Pacemaker, but I think you're right, this should be um, your support list track it is potentially going to be a little bit easier for energy pace maker to protect the dk than it is direct the list track but then again dk is going to be a little bit weaker in lane up against the storm spirit in general i think list track just needs farm for him to be effective early on the ganks coming out from a telekinesis and a support with is nice and all but unless list track gets tanky he's just going to die to all of the aoe damage that team braveheart are going to bring to bear i still think i'd like to see this lesh get some amount of farm but that would make energy pacemaker's landing stage incredibly greedy i mean bloodseeker can also go into the off lane if necessary of course you're up against an earth shaker it's going to be extremely difficult for you to escape from that but it might happen like you said also bloodseeker might just go into the jungle and definitely agree that leshrak does a hell of a lot better with farm than without but last band Meter Wyvern, banned out by Braveheart. Energy Pacemaker though, I suppose some kind of an off laner to be banned out, but which one is even the scariest for an Energy Pacemaker to face? Uh, I'd probably ban the Tusk here if I'm Energy Pacemaker, but something like a Darkseer could also work pretty nicely for Team Braveheart. There's a lot of different options. Honestly, I think the Darkseer might end up being the ban. Definitely wouldn't be too shabby of a pickup with that combination there, but we'll see. Tusk, I could see working out for sure. You just grab the Juggernaut, get next to somebody, and easy Blade Fury to follow, and the target is almost Yeah, for there. sure. But Tusk, what's the ban? Spot on. Once more, Grandis. It feels like you've done this before. <laughs> I think most of us have. Currently, the metagame's a little bit stale, especially for this tier 2 Chinese scene. To be honest, usually like Tusk is even first phase ban material these days yeah. for the most part. Honestly surprised you made it this far. Yeah, it just goes to show that... Of course it can even be sometimes like the drafter himself kind of forgets about the hero, just so used to it being banned all the time, it's like, oh damn, it was open. But now, Team Braveheart, they have lots of time left in the reserve time. So... Do you still think it could be the Darkseer here for them? Right, very well could be. There's plenty of other options though for Team Braveheart. I'm not sure how their lanes shake down. I mean, if they expect any kind of melee hero to farm the safe lane, then Darkseer just becomes so much better as an offlaner. Absolutely. It's, it is just one of the most annoying things to go up against. Even if your support just zone out the Darkseer himself and he's not getting XP, the Iron Shell will still just prevent you from farming properly or We'll have to just ma make you chew through tangos, healing cells and whatnot. So, it, it wouldn't be the worst, but it's just Darkseer in general. I've seen so many Darkseers fail that I can't say I'm hoping for that hero. Although, I, I like the hero myself, but just past experience in competitive Dota, it's, it's not the greatest for Darkseer. Yeah, if there ever was a melee hero that can line up against Darkseer, it probably is Bloodseeker since he does have the Blood Rage to constantly heal off of the creeps. It's going to instead be a Tidehunter. This draft from Team Braveheart is a little bit of a blast from the past, uh, with both the Tide and Juggernaut showing their faces. For Energy Pacemaker, they'll snag up the Dazzle. So, with the Dazzle coming out, is this then going to be a Bloodseeker offlane, or are they going to run some form of aggressive trilane even, possibly? Yeah, that is definitely an option for them. Um, let's see, who would be inside that aggressive trial? We'll just have to wait and see, I think, um, as we just quickly go ahead and introduce our players. It's going to be Xiao Tu Lei playing on the Bloodseeker. He is their offlane player and opens up with a poor man shield. Old Chicken going to be playing the Dragonite fan on the Lishrak Lei on the Dazzle. And unfortunately, I can't read Rubik's name and I can't remember it either. Yeah, it's Twist Chinese is something that... It's probably good to learn because just so many people are speaking it, but damn, would it be hard to learn it. But on the Braveheart side, Chao Yue will be handling the uh, Chuggernaut, leaving Shore on the Tide Hunter with Kian Kian being the Earthshaker, Lina, a name that I cannot read either, and the same for the Storm Spirit. 
but they are aggressively smoking up. Of course, Energy Pacemaker themselves are going aggressive just without the smoke, but both teams really want to just block out some camps. Yeah, this is quite a change of pace from the games we saw earlier in the G League finals, where both of the teams were mostly just content to place their words and then not contest each other for the bounty runes. But uh, by, both of these sides seem to be pretty confident in their level one fight. And honestly, I think a level one skirmish is pretty close for either side. Tech are currently rocking a lot of regen, two stacks of tangos and a salve, but still has yet to place the word. Honestly, I think that's some wasted time coming out from shore, but uh, maybe it's a good read from these lanes as Braveheart are going to just stick their heroes very deep in enemy lines. They're going to bump into the Bloodseeker. Oh no! Shout to is going to eat the Light Striker with a follow-up. Fisher, this is going to be our first blood onto the Bloodseeker. Nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it. You don't expect three heroes to be up that ramp at l the creep spawn, excuse me. Yeah, it's a rather unfortunate timing as well. Usually if you like get caught immediately, you're going to respawn. But now, as you can see, he was forced to also purchase a TP, so just extra gold down the drain, kind of. But he is back to the lane and he's not going to miss XP, unless of course he's going to be zoned out by the support, but... Interesting that both teams decided to go for an aggressive try lane, but... Braveheart is such so strong. <laughs> Another Fisher comes out. He does have Tango, so he can eat his way through if he wants to and needs to. But the stun catches him anyway, but Blade Fury being on cooldown, he's going to survive, but... Already down to half HP, this, this is going to be such a tough lane for him. Yeah, absolutely. Bloodseeker honestly is going to probably need to go into the woods very quickly if he wants to get any sort of gold income this game. And another Fissure Block, another Light Strike, Ray, and another Blade Fury. This is going to be the second death of the Bloodseeker. Wow. This is not a great way to start the game. Well, but at least Kian can now have to use his last clarity, so that's something. But if they continue like this, they're going to have like extremely fast arcane boots even on somebody if necessary. Maybe it's just going to be a soul ring on the Earthshaker. But... This, this is some just massive efficiency coming out from them, getting two kills this early on. Of course, there's not much a Bloodseeker can do against that uh, Fisher block like we already talked about earlier, but didn't really expect it to happen this fast and this easy for them. Tidehunter should definitely have a slightly better time, but... Well, especially since he's going to be up against two heroes only, but those are two ranged heroes and... Well, Tidehunter might be getting XP, but farm-wise, probably not as much until the point that also the Rubik leaves the lane. Yeah, Bloodseeker is currently level 1 up against the tri lane where everybody on the enemy's side has level 2. It's not a comfortable situation at all. The lane we haven't looked at is mid lane, Storm Spirit versus Dragon Knight. And for now, it's slightly favored towards the Storm. I'd expect this to be about where it stays. Dragon Knight can spam out his Breathe Fire pretty reliably as the bottle running can always uh, bottle Crow. Looks like that's what he's going to be doing uh, fairly shortly. Actually, no, that courier is going back to base instead. Um, but regardless, yeah, mid lane's not very interesting unless we see support rotations. Yeah, so it's probably going to be fine for the Storm Spirit that the supports aren't rotating around. Although, if the Earthshaker is coming in, which he might be at the moment, he's running that way, a nice Fisher block might get the kill, but probably Storm Spirit needs to get a little bit of a rest done before that as well. Oh, well then, we're stuck at the pause screen, and hopefully this isn't going to last, but oh, looks like we have the good to go, at least from the admin. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's nice that the admin isn't lagging then, I guess. But yeah, teams are ready as well. Sometimes teams just wait for somebody else to ask, I'm not too sure, but a good thing that they are ready indeed. So they just continue on. Storm Spirit is actually taking quite a bit of damage, but he's going to have his bottle arrive any time now. And Kian Kian, he is ready to just get himself yet another assist in this game. You know, well, Chicken is fairly tanky, has full HP and enough mana for one Breathe Fire, which does decrease the incoming damage from the Earthshaker and Storm Spirit pretty significantly. They are going to rely on right clicks if they want to pull this kill through, and honestly, I'm not sure if it's going to be possible for him to do this, but they're going to try anyway. Old Chicken's in a very compromising position. The Fissure Block is going to be there, and it's a pretty nice one. Forcing him to run towards the left hand side. Can't count. This is going to have another fissure in 10 seconds. But by that time, Old Chicken probably is going to be able to walk out of here unless there's body blocks with a long range dragon slave. Old Chicken is going to be punched down. Very well played by the Earthshaker. Honestly, that was a pretty hard kill to get. And they're going to find themselves with a nice start to this game. Braveheart 3 0. Yeah, had the Dragon Knight just chosen to run bottom side, he would have probably been fine. But. Also, at the same note, if Lina had not come in to just provide backup, he probably would have escaped or at least made it a hell of a lot harder because he would have kept on running the top side. But a nice kill, 3-0. This early game, 
it's definitely not something that the nature pacemaker was expecting i think i mean i wasn't expecting such easy kills for them either but bottom lane look at this tower already pushing in there is no diabolic edict but quite a bit of damage done nonetheless yeah and they'll continue to get this damage through fan can very easily push out the wave even without a basilius on him or the rubik uh the tower is slowly but surely going to fall down whether it's denied or not it's a, another story entirely but little track is kind of the silver lining for energy pace make at the moment fan his farm isn't being touched at all. There's not much the Tide Hunter can do by himself. Yeah, he's still getting reasonable levels though. Bloodseeker just completely has gone into the jungle for the most part now. Is almost level 3, but if you're running him in a core role, you just need a little bit more. You at least need to get that level 6 so you can just start setting up kills, which unfortunately for him just isn't happening. Whereas at the same time, Chow Yue on the Juggernaut just enjoying his life. Has the exact same amount to farm as the Leshrac even. Mid lane, also Dragon Knight has one up on the Storm Spirit. It just goes to show that even if it's not the easiest lane for a Dragon Knight, just breathe fire by itself, plus of course the Quelling Blade helping out as well and the tankiness from the Dragon Blood. It's just really hard to completely bully out the Dragon Knight. For sure, up in the top lane, Dazzle's gonna get quite a lot of experience up against this um, Juggernaut, but can't really show his face comfortably. He'll just snag as much as possible, but even so, he's still doing better than the Bloodseeker. It really, it's just been a very inhospitable game for the Bloodseeker after starting off the game on such a bad situation. We have an Invis rune picked up by the Rubik going towards mid. This is probably a kill on the Storm Spirit if we have a stun available for the Dragonite, and we do. They're gonna open up with Breathe Fire, hit him once, Fade Bolt, lift, pull him back. They have the stun, and that's going to be a kill. Rubik is going to secure the last hit with a little bit of help from the Dazzle. Up in top lane, Fissure Block off on the Bloodseeker with the Blade Fury damage. That's going to be yet another kill on the Shelter lane. Dolo, Chaiwe, even well, TPing out himself as well. Does finish up Trump soon, just needs to. Oh, and bottom lane? <laughs> They're kind of going to Fan, trying to run away, juking through the trees with the Tangos. There's another Gush available by the. Tide Hunter, and this should be a kill. He turns around for the stun, but dies to the Dragon Slave. Man, just kills on all lanes. Oh, top lane. We might see something on the Earth Shakers. Well, Rubik has arrived, but it's only the two supports, and they don't even have Poison Touch on the Dazzle. So far, going for a purely defensive just skill build on him. But even though one kill was there for an Edge Pacemaker, <laughs> in general, it's just still going so well for Braveheart. Although, they have the kills. How much of a lead do they have? Well, those kills net them a 1500 net worth lead for now. XP, only about 400, so not that big of a deal. And to be honest, I thought, would have thought that maybe it gives Braveheart a little bit more momentum even, but it does depend on what items they go for with the gold that they have. Yeah, even though there is a kill advantage for Braveheart, the farm advantage isn't there at all. In fact, Energy Pacemaker have been using the map a little bit more efficiently and just eked out a little bit more CS across the map. So that's the reason why the advantage is so slim. Um, as if it's not really there at all. Bloodseeker is finally starting to catch up, finds himself level 4 inside the woods, but really until he gets rupture, I don't think he can make any real rotations. Yeah, probably not, and that rupture point is still so far away. Level 4, just a sad, sad life for this Bloodseeker. It's well, 6 minutes in, so I guess it could be worse as well, but not by too much. Juggernaut on the top lane now is struggling, but then again, he does have his ultimate if necessary. Telekinesis comes out. Split Earth to follow as well. They need a little bit more damage. There are no creeps around and never mind. The attacks will be enough. Blade Fury, as good as it is, doesn't really just protect you against physical damage. And that is the kill mid lane. Storm Spirit just taking a breathe fire into the face, but that's about it. But double arcane boots finished at the same time. One for Rubik, definitely a great item to have as a support. And the other for the Tidehunter. And then you have a point booster up for the list track. Is everybody's going to get those uh, nice efficient stat items for now? We have a regeneration rune on the storm. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to use that to find any kills on a Dragonite without intervention. And it looks like where they want to go for kills is top, but the Dragonite eats a stun as well as a lightning storm as he comes in. Even though that's not going to lead to a kill, it's damage that was very easily thrown up by Energy Pacemaker for much in return. Yeah, and since Leshrac does have the point booster now, you pointed out. It makes his life a little bit easier just because he doesn't have to be afraid of like getting one shot by the Omni Slash anymore. So definitely you can just go a little bit more aggressive, go spam that lightning storm. Of course when plus one hero comes, that's when you have to be worried just because then there's a blade fury value as well coming out. Mid lane though, O Chicken has popped the Elder Dragon form, trying to pressure the tier one and 
Well, there's a storm spirit around. It's gonna go in ball lightning with a TP assisting. Fisher doesn't stun anybody. The block isn't perfect, but with the ravage, they get the double disabled. And they should get the one kill. Then again, Shallow Grave comes out. Oh, are you kidding me? Is he really gonna make it out? Old Chicken bottling up is gonna survive the storm spirit. Zips in under the tower, but Old Chicken is already too healthy. He'll end up pulling out and with no more mana. That's a big loss for Braveheart. They use Ravage, they don't get anything, they use a TP rotation, and now they might even lose their Storm Spirit. You lose the Breathe Fire, getting lifted up, but with the Light Strike Array and Dragon Slave connecting onto two, Dragon Knight is going to be killed in trade. A one for one, mid for mid, pretty even, but now that the Bloodseeker's cut out with the Omni Slash and the Blade Fury, that's going to be yet another kill for Braveheart. So in the end, somehow it still works out for Braveheart, but that was just Energy Pacemaker maybe going a little bit too deep. And it also was a pretty nice Fisher coming out, although it didn't hit the stuns. Oh, they're gonna get the Rubik as well. They got the guys, no Shallow Grave, or rather Dazzle Chest. His turn rate was a little bit too slow to be able to apply that spell. So Braveheart, they lose the Storm Spirit, which, yes, is a little bit sad, but getting those three kills in your turns is definitely worth it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Even though it didn't use the Ravage how they wanted to, it involves Sidehunter and a couple of kills, but oh, that poor Lishrak getting jumped up top is going to be pulled back in, and they don't even need a further Fissure, or maybe they do. Fan is going to buy himself a little bit more space, but it looks like Stormster has just enough mana to get this kill. One auto attack with the Overload is going to be his demise. So close, I mean, Storm Spirit messed up a little bit by being unable to dodge that Split Earth, but in the end, you get the kill, so that is all that matters. I think he would have had to just go almost all the way back home or rely on a just fresh rune for him. Or we'll see if he even wants to go home, TP scroll on cooldown as well. But bottom lane now, drums finished on the Juggernaut. His ultimate of course still on cooldown, mid lane. Lina not yet level 6, if only is she had the Laguna Blade. They will probably look for a kill, but mid lane no chicken. Once again Elder Dragon form, and this time around not too sure if they will be able to defend, but then again, they have quite a few heroes in the just vicinity of the tier 1 here. The push will continue, and with the extra armor offered by the Weave, I don't think this is a great time for Braveheart to fight. They don't have Ravage for 20 seconds, so I think the window is quickly closing. Maybe they can get an Anai onto this tier 1, but that's about as much as they can hope for, and even that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, it's, if Lina is spot on, but I guess the Dragon Knight is definitely not easy, but they get it with the Tide Hunter getting that last hit. And Tide Hunter actually himself up to 1.2k gold now as well. I'm hoping for a Blink Dagger, but... It may also be a mech for him. Yeah, he does have two iron branches, so mechanism is an option, but I think the Blink Dagger, since he is having quite a good time, is probably the choice. They're going to smoke up with three heroes, but in the meantime, it's a dire train up towards top as they're just grouping and taking down these towers systematically. They are giving some space to Juggernaut in bottom lane as he's going to start pressuring that tier one with the healing ward activated, but it looks like Energy Pacemaker just want to go tower to tower and take them down with a DD on Old Chicken. They can very easily take down this one. If only they had Tyabora Gidict as well, but for now they already succeeded in just forcing out the glyph, so that's already pretty decent if you ask me. And well, 11 minutes in, we can see that the Chuggernaut is just heads above anybody else in the network. But the TPs are coming in, they might get the kill as well if they just get the disable, but no, nope, Blade Fury TP out, nothing to cancel that. Yeah, he'll be able to make it home safely, and that's going to stop any pushing aggression coming out from Energy Pacemaker in the top lane. But it looks like they're just going to swing down towards the bottom just the same. Now it's Braveheart's turn uh, to just go for the straight up trade. Smoke up from the Rubik as well as the Bloodseeker. It looks like they want to join the rest of their team. But the tier 1 tower has already since fallen. And well, EP. They get the one with the double damage on Dragon Knight. It's going to be kind of a trade. Although there is a glyph for energy pace. Maybe Mid lane. Rupture under the Juggernaut, but where's the follow-up damage from the rest of his team? He's going to be lifted up inside the Silent Circle, pulled back, and that's going to be his death. Why would Juggernaut not carry a TP? Not too sure if it would have been off cooldown from the last time he used it anyway, He tp bottom lane, yeah, it wouldn't have been off of cooldown. But still, you need to carry it. I mean, let's say this gank had happened 30 seconds later, it would have still been the same story since he didn't have a TP. Unless he had it and cancelled it somehow, not sure. But a great kill, and this suddenly opens Energy Pacemaker up for an easy tier 2 push as well. They have the level 1 in Double Gidic now, and this tier 2, I have to say, just went way too easily for Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, now that Edict points are going to start coming up from the Lishrak, subsequent tier 2s can also fall into their favor, but the Dragon Knight really is getting so much value from just this level 1 Elder Dragon form. 
and they'll probably go another time as soon as old chicken has that backup again he is sacrificing a little bit of his farm for this and um because of how much they're grouping up the storm spirit and the juggernaut are sitting at the top of the net worth chart but only just really if you take a look at the Lishrak Dragonite, Dragonite and Storm Spirit's inventories, they're very close to even. Yeah, and funny thing is that Bloodseeker, he's actually caught up in levels rather nicely. He's sitting on the same level that the Dragonite is, so... If you just joined in now, you wouldn't even think that he was struggling all that hard to begin with, just losing his life twice in the first minute and a half or so. But still Storm Spirit as well as Juggernaut getting some pretty decent farm themselves, so that's always gonna be a threat. Storm Spirit though, going for Bloodstone first, so there's no like Orchid threat coming out, but then again, you kind of need the tankiness as well. Well, there is a smoke available for Lena if they want to go for a rotation, but it looks like that's not going to be the course of action. Instead, they're just going to farm up a little bit more. As we're waiting for the Bloodstone up in the Storm Spirit, and Bloodstone up on the Lotus Shrek for the Dire side. Up in top lane, Choyu is standing there as the Juggernaut, but he'll eventually TP down towards the tier 2 tower at mid. Nobody on the dire side is the wiser. So things are definitely slowing down or have slowed down for the past minute or so, but oh, Bloodseeker, he needs so little extra gold to actually get himself that blade mail finished. But Tidehunter, a huge, one of the biggest item pickups possibly that can even happen in this game, a blink dagger for him. We have only seen one Ravage so far, it was a decent Ravage in terms of how many targets it hit. Of course, the follow-up wasn't exactly there, but now with the Blink Dagger, especially if they should catch just an HP Speaker doing Roche, it could be so massive. Yeah, now Roshan Tempt is commencing with the Medallion pickup coming out from the Dazzle. They are doing it fairly quickly, but a Blink Ravage inside the pit is a force to be reckoned with, and I think they'll be able to get there before the Roshan falls. The Juggernaut's going to be leading the charge, but the Roshan is... Ooh, it's dying quickly. The Tide Hunter's there. He's gonna blink and ravage onto five. The Rubik is there looking for the steel, but they're not gonna find it. It's a disaster for the dire side as they get wiped. That's going to be a Roshan as well for Braveheart. A huge turn of events. What a way to show off that Tide Hunter blink. <laughs> I can't believe this happened. It's. Oh, wow. That's. I have no words for that. Energy Pacemaker. They even had the ward down, so they probably felt safe, but that's just the beauty of a well-timed smoke as well. Wow. For a second I thought that maybe Braveheart are going to be like a second or two too late, that they're at least going to pick up the Aegis and Roshan, but nope, not the case. And with that fight suddenly, also the Earthshaker gets a Blink Dagger. That's Arcane Boots Blink Dagger 15 minutes in for a support like this. It's ridiculous. That's... That's just such a huge boost in momentum for Braveheart. If you look at the graphs, it was actually Energy Pacemaker starting to get a slight lead in network suddenly. One fight and 4k just upward swing for Braveheart and XP suddenly about a 7,500 lead. Yeah, and Lena's halfway towards Yules. Even though that's really nice and all for the cores of Braveheart, I think it really is the supports that collected big out of that last fight. I mean, of course, outside of the Aegis that they picked up on their Storm Spirit, but... My goodness, this game is starting to be very scary for Energy Pacemaker. The Storm Spirit's going to blow all of his mana, so he's going to have to go back to base before he wants to fight again. But uh, even so, 14 to 4, this game probably couldn't have started out much better. And really, if you take a look at the graphs, Energy Pacemaker were farming well enough to where, even though they were to kill Disparity, it didn't matter. But now, <laughs> it really does. Braveheart's raw power level with these items is huge. Yeah, it's definitely nothing to just laugh at and... Storm Spirit, level 11 now, gonna finish up the Bloodstone in just the recipe's gold. Also, there's gonna be a Shadow Blade finished up on the Juggernaut now. Do you think he's gonna straight up finish the Silver Age, or is he gonna leave it just later on and go for some other item in between? Uh, well, he already has the Shadow Blade. I don't think it's really worth upgrading to the Silver Edge this game. It's pretty nice for killing off the Dragon Knight reliably, but... Yeah, I'd probably have hoped for a different build on the Dragonaut, but maybe it pays off here. He's going to spot out the Dazzle and the Dragonite in mid. They'll kill off the Healing Ward, but they should know something's up. He's going to hit the Dazzle, and with a Fissure, he'll Omni Slash and kill him very easily. But now Old Chicken, with a Hastern, is going to smack him a couple of times. That's the showing off of the Shadow Blade. It could have been a lot worse for Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, just losing Dazzle, definitely acceptable. I mean, yes, you would like to get farm on everybody and not feed away gold while doing it, but... If you're gonna have to lose a hero, it might as well be the Dazzle or the Rubik there. But since they got the one kill, 
they already grouped up anyway. Oh, Storm Spirit jumps in. Can he get the kill? He's getting the Electric Vortex. And yes, that will be the kill indeed. Bloodseeker just... There was nothing he could do. Yeah, and that's going to be a completed Bloodstone on the Storm Spirit in just a couple of seconds as he has the gold for that recipe. And a Tier 1 Tower going the way of Braveheart. The game is by no means over for Energy Pacemaker, but with a Blink Echo and Blink Ravage up for <clears throat> Braveheart, even if... They were 5,000 gold behind, in theory, if the graphs were reversed. Energy Pace Baker still probably couldn't take this fight. It's just so big. We can <laughs> ravage. They go straight onto those through with the follow up echo onto Old Chicken and the Rubik. They'll kill him off. Lay's able to get off the grave, but that's only going to delay the inevitable just as they give us a little bit of breathing room. It's going to be all over 19 to 4. Braveheart, another convincing fight. I mean, I have to just pull out the fun fact here. The name Shore or how Shore is spelled in general means Thai in Estonian. So this Thai Hunter, his initiations, they've been like spot on. He got the Blink Dagger, he's gone for two Ravages after that and both of them have been pretty much as perfect as can be in those situations. Yeah, he averaged four heroes per Ravage after picking up the Blink Dagger. That's pretty darn good. And now with this momentum, Braveheart are going to keep on pushing, keep on fighting, why not? The Bloodstone is finished on the Storm Spirit. He has a bounty rune in the bottle, still sitting on that Aegis, and he's on, or he's going to have that for another minute or so. And uh, well, the tier two tower in top lane is going to be taking a lot of heat. So I, I can find one positive from the last fight for an energy pacemaker. It was that the Bloodstone recipe wasn't quite yet delivered out to the Storm Spirit, but there is a smoke now for energy pacemaker. They're trying to be sneaky, but Tylanter not the best target to go for, but they rupture him as well anyway. The silence is coming in, but. There's Storm Spirit zipping in, they get the one kill, but can they get any more Dazzle? He's still alive, can he get the Shallow Grave off? No, goes down to the Omni Slash, two heroes down, probably a couple of more to follow, but Splitter will come in, Choyo is dropping low charge and they take him down, and suddenly I don't think they have the damage to deal with Old Chicken anymore. They're gonna kill off the Earthshaker and keep on chasing the Storm Spirit's going to lose his Aegis any second now. The Storm Spirit's going to zip away and, well, let's see if he loses it at a poor time. If his regen gets cancelled, that could be disastrous. But with the extra mana regen, should be able to zip out of there. There goes the Aegis and there goes the mana back into the Storm Spirit's pockets. He's just going to zip, zip zap all the way home. He should be fine. But even so, that's a good fight for Energy Pacemaker. At the very least, as good as they could have hoped for. It does cost them a buyback on Rubik, however. It just goes to show that if Braveheart doesn't have those massive teamfight ultimates, they're not as strong, although they definitely just did quite a bit of damage anyway, but just getting the proper damage to like kill off a Dragon Knight who is so ridiculously tank tanky just due to the Dragon Blood. They also had, I think, a defensive weave on them as well. And of course, being able to kill off one target before anything else really happened. But Energy Pacemaker, they can't be counting on such a fight every single time, so they're somehow either gonna have to try to bait out the Ravage and possibly the Echo Slam, or just retaliate when those abilities are on cooldown like they did just now. Yeah, it has been a pretty good game coming out from Energy Pacemaker given the situation that they've been in. They have been playing accordingly um, when it comes to working around this big teamfight ultimate. So that really is the weakness of Tidehunter, but in the meantime, Bloodseeker gets sniped out by the Storm Street. He's going to be forced to stand there for quite some time as he is uh, excuse me, ruptured, but he'll be able to TP away straight out. There's no Yules on the Lash. Yeah, not yet at least, although he has two components, the most expensive ones already finished for it, but... Lina does have a Yule Scepter, for example, of course you can't still compare the networks, but... One is a straight out support, one is a core, so... It's still going really well for Braveheart, although momentum may be a little bit stifled, and... The thing is that... Even if they win the fight, it's still rather early on, the respawn timers aren't all that long, so if they win the fight... Their chances of actually getting a Rax on top of that afterwards aren't that high, but oh, Chavio, he's gonna find Fan. There's the Omni Slash as well, Shallow Grave, it will come out just in time. And Chuggernaut, if he keeps on chasing, he might just lose his life. But then again, if he gets the Lash Rack before, he might even be worth it, but he's gonna get stunned and probably lose his life. He does have 10 stick charges, there's a Bloodseeker Silent Circle on the ground, that'll kill him off on impact. As far as that rock gold trade is concerned, slightly favors the Dire team, but uh, yeah, that was really deep by the Juggernaut. Honestly, I think once he committed the Blade Fury, he needed to just TP out, but Bloodseeker caught up by the Ravage, so commit the um, Echo Slam as well. The Bloodseeker still survives, one auto attack from Lena will chase him and kill him off as they chase forward for Lei. Yule Scepter is going to be dropped, they'll stun up the Rubik after the fact, but now the team is getting split apart. Lena will die, Light Striker is stolen by the Rubik, and everybody else needs to TP or one way or another, get out home. It's Alina for a Bloodseeker, and 
Uh, that's okay, I guess, but they commit both the Echo Slime and the Tight Hunter Ravage, which gives a big window of opportunity for Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, that felt just so forced. I'm not even too sure why they did it, in all honesty, and not only that, it was also just Laguna Blade straight into the Shallow Grave. Maybe it was just a little bit of Chinese server lag for me that I saw them in the wrong order or something, but... I, I don't know, felt a little bit awkward by them in Braveheart. They are still in the lead by about 7.5, almost 8k net worth. XP about 8.5, 9k as well, but... Edge Pacemaker, they're definitely showing signs of life, and should they finish those PKPs on the Dragonite and the Bloodseeker, things will improve greatly for them. Down towards bottom lane, Glimmer Cape by the Rubik, they'll get a lift up onto the Juggernaut with the Light Strike Array and the Earth Spider to follow up. Even Blade Fury isn't going to save him here. They have vision, and they'll kill him off very easily. So, Juggernaut, is this the point when he starts thinking like, hey, it's not going all that well, I might need a BKB. Yeah, probably. <laughs> There's so much chain stun and chain lockdown coming up from Energy Base Maker. But on top lane, Storm Spirit zips in, but doesn't have any mana. He's under tower. He gets lifted up, ruptured, pulled back in. Although the Splitter lands, it doesn't matter. He's going to be forced what, what to commit Braveheart suicide. Doing? <laughs> I I don't know. This is very over aggressive and over eager. They're fighting without the Ravage, without their Echo Slam. They're going in and committing Echo Slam and Ravage for solo kills when they probably don't need to. This game is starting to become back in Energy Pacemaker's pocket. Let's see, the advantage that once was about 10k Shadow in their favor is... That is something to keep in mind, but he doesn't have Echo Slam for 4 seconds. Who needs the Echo Slam and could... Oh, well, he has the Echo Slam now, but can he kill Tazzle before? Yes, with the help of Kaishi, can. Gem on the ground, Storm Spirit zips in as well. New Scepter goes onto the Lash and Bloodseeker. Probably gonna lose his life. They don't have a damage, but don't think they will need it. Lash Rack forced to commit suicide, but this suicide does keep the Bloodseeker alive for a little bit longer. Usually Echo Slam for a solo support isn't worth it, but when they're carrying a gem and when you can take a fight like that after the fact, it's really good for Braveheart. Finally, they get a fight back under their feet. The last couple minutes of the game have been very iffy, to say the least, but now they can start applying some pressure. Yeah, and I think it was even a good thing that the Ravage was still on cooldown, just because I think they would have gone for almost the exact same fight, but also popped the Ravage just to ensure those kills, but now... They have the backup of it, which just means that they're gonna spot out Roshan, and it is so much safer to fight knowing you have the Ravage to back yourself up. Yeah, absolutely, and their heroes are very quick at taking down Roshan, as well as very good at fighting inside Roshan Pit, and very good at abusing the Aegis, so unless Energy Pacemaker get there now, they're not going to be able to contest this, and I don't think they're going to be fast enough. They're smoking through, and they'll wait for the Bloodseeker, but by the time that they get there, Roshan is already going to be so low, and it is fighting into the <clears throat> Ravages we've already mentioned. There is no Echo Slam in the Earthshaker, he uses his Shadow Blade, but doesn't find anything with it. Mm, this could break out at any moment. There is a PKB on O-Chicken though, but the Fisher it blocks O-Chicken, he's gonna pop his PKB, but can he do anything with it? But get Ravage catches four with the follow-up enchant totem onto the same four. Who needs Echo Slam when you have enchant, I suppose? They're going to buy back on their Juggernaut, trying to get back into this fight. They'll kill off the Tide Hunter and the Earthshaker after that. Good initiation. They are falling off of the rails. And now the Storm Strike coming back in. Might just die with the Dragon Tail with the follow-up disable from the Lashrak. That's going to be all she wrote. The Juggernaut dying so quickly really cost them that engagement, but now he's going to go for the Omni Slash, but with the Yule Scepter, he's probably going to go down. Although Fan might end up losing his life, there's no mana for the Laguna Blade, and Lina won't be able to secure that. Ooh, this game is really starting to <laughs> go crazy. They're going to catch out the Juggernaut. He's going to go down, not to... Oh, he got killed he... by a neutral! I don't even know. <laughs> Alpha Wolves! Alpha Wolves for the win. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what's going on in this game. Energy Pacemaker just come back with a really big fight, and now the net worth and the experience grabs are going to start getting very close to even. This this game is so ridiculous. Roche doesn't favor anybody, it looks like, but th that Ravage, I was like, oh, for my Ravage, but I guess they were just lacking that Echo Slam damage to follow up to get those immediate kills on the Dazzle, just preventing him from getting out any heals, and not only that, the Fissure that initially blocked off the Dragon Knight it actually also prevented the others from properly following up that Ravage. Then, of, of course, Fisher got stolen as well at some point by the Rubik, and... Oh wow, things going a little bit south now, but Kian Kian, scouting with the Shadow Blade will back up just in time. And I do believe they also lost the gem, or rather, an HP Pacemaker. Yeah, they reclaimed it, Dragonite's holding it.
Yep. <laughs> well, um, this game is exciting to say the least. I honestly don't know what the next thing to happen is going to be. Uh, Courier currently flying out to the Rubicus, holding nothing. It uh, looks like they're going to just look for vision onto that high ground, but there are no words placed there by Braveheart. They're safe to go for smokes or whatever they want around that area. They're just trying to seize as much map control as they can while they still lay claim to the Gem of True Sight. Look at the Chuggernauts. I remember a time when he had more net worth than now, just the buyback hurting him so much. Item progression, not really there at all. I mean, the Shadow Blade so far, I think it's netted him like one kill. Well, it got him the second kill on Leshrac as well, but he lost his own life for that. So Shadow Blade's effectiveness so far hasn't really been there, if you ask me, and... Well, at least Tidehunter is getting somewhat close to his Refresher Orb, so Double Ravage is something they can just hope to turn things around with, but as I say that, Blood Seeker does just now finish a fresh PKB. Zipping in mid, Storm Spirit's going to farm it up, as the rest of his team is sitting in a situation where they could, in theory, back him up if he gets jumped, but uh, yeah, it looks like they were thinking about smoking, but haven't done so quite yet. The smoke is sitting on Alina's inventory. Zip in by the storm, zip out again. The storm store has used a lot of his mana before this fight even begins. Honestly, I don't think Braveheart can take an engagement when Storm's sitting on only 500 mana points. Yeah, it's probably not the smartest idea, and <laughs> we have a third PKB. Lesh gets his as well, so all the cores are covered. Dazzle he should be able to stay at the just long enough distance to not even be caught in that ravage and with that even if somebody doesn't get off the BKB in time there can still be the shallow grave some heals to come out as well things are really turning around it's it just is juggernaut he needs much more farm and the thing is that usually you see juggernauts focusing more on farm than on fighting they join fights only when they have omni slash but this one hasn't really been farming up all that much and you can see it just it's kind of punishing them now I, yeah, I'm when they were sure. taking so many good engagements, it was working out for him, but he at one point was sitting on like 9, 3, and 6 or something, and that's a good KTA for an aggressive jug, but uh, since then he's just died so many times without finding anything, so uh, yeah, I think this Juggernaut just needs a little bit more time to marinate before he can really be on the same level of effectiveness as the Dragon Knight and the Lash. Yeah, and the Bloodseeker, I mean, doesn't even need to do all that much, as long as he just ruptures somebody, makes it so that Chuggernaut can't really move, for example, after the Omni Slash, or gets a really clutch Blood Rite, which... Was that what happened last time? Did the Blood Rite catch the Chuggernaut? Was that why he died even in the Roche fight, or the fight after Roche? Well, I'm pretty sure, but in the meantime, they're gonna five-man smoke, just walking straight through mid lane. Hmm, this could go nicely for them, but... At the moment, EP spread is pretty good. There's not an opportunity for anything more than a two-man Ravage Echo Slam by the looks of things, but they're going to try for it anyway, opening up with the Shadow Blade on the Juggernaut. He's going to look for the Omni Slash, but it's hardly doing any damage to the Dragonite. Ravaged up, Tidehunter's now in a bit of a pickle. He's going to use the Ravage, but it's mostly absorbed by BKB targets. Stormsphere goes under the back lines, but he can't even kill off these supports. Lena gets the Life Strike Array on to Lay. Will Laguna Blade down the Dazzle, but at the cost of her own life, a double kill on the Soul and Ravage that hits absolutely nothing, but it uh, might actually matter as a blink and echo slam turnaround onto the Bloodseeker and the Rubik is going to cost them their lives. Stormsert trying to zip away has not enough mana to get out safely and it's a 3 for 4 bloodbath inside the Radiant Woods, or Dire Woods, excuse me, I'm completely turned around. Well it could have gone worse for Braveheart, they did get the free kills but Leshrac surviving, he's up to 15 bloodstone charges all of a sudden. I remember him having like a semi-fresh Bloodstone and having to suicide at one point, but now 15 charges, that's massive. Dragon Knight gonna have the S and Y finished up as well. And that Tidehunter, he just lost his cool. That's all I can say about that damage. He saw those PKBs being there. M maybe they didn't have information beforehand that some of the heroes have PKBs, so maybe they thought like, yeah, I'm not gonna hit the Dragon Knight, but I'm gonna catch the others, but then you saw just... A world of gold pop on the Bloodseeker as well as the Leshrac on top of the Dragon Knight already, so... That, unfortunately, that Ravage did more or less nothing. It hit, I think, the Rubik, but... Well, Rubik just got to stole it anyway. Or steal it. Yeah, the Earthshaker initiation somewhat bails out that fight for Braveheart. At the very least, they kill off the Bloodseeker and the Rubik, but... Um, without that, it would have been an absolute disaster. You now have an S and Y out for the Dragonite, and... I think this is now Energy Pacemaker's advantage. They're very close to it when it comes to experience. The graph is almost completely zeroed out. Yeah, and late game-wise, it's actually hard to say who would have the better time, but 
I just think since the Chuggernaut is under farm, it's favoring energy pacemaker, but then again, we also have to take into account that the BKB durations will start getting lower and lower, and by the time they're down to like 5 seconds, maybe 6, 7, that should also be the point that Tidehunter finishes his re refresher orb. So, Tidehunter has to pull off something big, but just winning a fight might not be enough. Braveheart also need to pick up on just a regular farming. Well, the game slowed down a little bit. We're going to wait for Ravage and Echo Slam to be up, but they're going to be available in just a matter of seconds. But maybe it's Energy Pacemaker's turn to take the fight to the Braveheart side. They're going to be deep behind enemy lines with a blink available for the Dragonite. He could very easily start a single target fight and just assassinate somebody if he so chooses. And he has plenty of backup to do so. The Juggernaut's showing out in lane. Do they have any vision on the other heroes? No, they're just going to walk blindly into it, which could be the end of them. Shadow Blade going to be used by the Juggernaut, if I'm not mistaken, as he runs towards the north. There is a smoke, though, by an HP Pacemaker. It was a rather fresh one as well, so plenty of time still on it. But, huh? I'm not sure if they smelled it coming or Juggernaut really just wanted to farm up the enemy jungle, and how crazy that is, as it may sound. The enemy jungle is rather often the safest place to farm. Oh, zip in. He's going straight into the base for the Rubik. The Storm Spirit will get that kill and BKB TP out. He gets it, but honestly, if I'm the Rubik, I'm okay with that. That's a 9 second BKB charge and a lot of commitment. And now with the blink in, oh, onto the Juggernaut. He's going to go for the spin TP and he will survive. Yeah, it's just Old Chicken a tad too late, or maybe it was extremely fast reactions by the Juggernaut getting the Blade Fury pre uh, Dragon Tail, but. I have to agree that the Storm Spirit mean it's not that big of a deal that the Rubik dies, and it just means the Storm Spirit had to go all the way back home, replenish his mana. I suppose you get the one Blast on charge, so that gets or makes the kill a little bit better, but also Storm Spirit is up to 3.4k gold now. Is it a hex you're building? Do you want to build some like physical resistance, get the Shivas or... Oh, I think the hex would be a good choice. They just need a way to focus down somebody at the start of the fight and Hex will help him do that a lot more effectively if he can take out the last sure um, just kill off one of the supports even it would be great for him Shiva has its merits and I don't think it would be a bad pickup but I'm leaning towards the Hex yeah I would pro pr prefer the Hex as well just catch somebody pre BKB but there is a smoke coming out Tidehunter doesn't have the double ravage but does have that single one and well they might even pop the Echo Slam for just that one Lesh Oh, and they're going to look for it. Fan with the Omni Slash Lacuna Blade and everything in the kitchen sink. That's going to be the killing spree ended by the Lina. So, definitely quite a bit of gold they're going to get from that. Also, lots of plus on charges lost on the Lish, but... Oh, he's going to be back up, so you can't really get another advantage on top of that. For example, had they been able to get the kill on, let's say, the Dragon Knight like this, and Dragon Knight didn't have buyback, they would have been able to go for Roshan, which, well, since the Lish, thanks to the Blast on his back so fast, they can't really do. Yeah, it's a good pickoff for sure, but it's not going to translate into any map objective. And now it's Energy Pacemaker's turn to look for that Roshan. Since they did commit an Echo for that, it's one less thing they have to worry about inside the pit. And without that Echo, I don't think Braveheart are going to be in a great situation to actually contest that. In fact, they're TPing back to their base from their own woods. Yeah, that's any hopes of contesting the Roshan down the tubes. Yeah, and this is Roshan number three as well, the magical one that holds the first cheese here. So they're gonna have like two extra lives if they manage to use them correctly. Aegis of course on the Lesh, just one of the better heroes to carry it. Storm Spirit and Lesh probably qualify for those positions there. And Cheese did go to... Yeah, the Bloodseeker. He's not the tankiest of heroes otherwise, but with the Cheese and the BKB helping out, should be able to just outlive the entire fight. Yeah, for sure. This is going to be pretty precarious for Braveheart, but then again, they do have a double Ravage up for the Tidehunter. Since he didn't, or, or since he hasn't leveled up to 16, since he hasn't leveled up his Ravage to level 3, he should be able to use it even without using the double Arcanes, but this is a big teamfight advantage that maybe they can catch Energy Pacemaker off guard with. Yeah, they're gonna have to do it nicely though, I mean, the thing is, you jump in first with the first Ravage, it might get BKB'd out, but can the Tidehunter survive long enough to be able to wait out those PKBs with the second damage. Mm, I think only time will tell, probably not, or at least that's what my gut's telling me. Energy Pacemaker going to be forced to deal with the split push up towards top, and Storm Spirit zips in, but this is 
potentially dangerous. They might have to look for a BKB TP and a spin TP, respectively. Lestrak is going to keep on chasing the Storm Spirit Jukes in the trees, and a zip TP will keep him home free. And Juggernaut, his Shadow Blade's about to wear off, is just going to look for a spin TP. So everybody is going to survive. That's completely worth it for Braveheart, but then again, Energy Pacemaker are going to stop here. Why not just push through top, take down that tier 2, and subsequently the barracks? Rat Toto is where it's at. It's it's working for them, and to be honest, it's probably the best thing they can do as well. Just because they were waiting, I think, for the Omni Slash to come back off, as well as the Echo Slam. And speaking of Echo Slam, we are getting pretty close, about 350 gold away from an Aghanim Earthshaker. I okay, so my thoughts on Aghanim's Earthshaker, I absolutely despise it. So if you take a look at how much damage it actually gives you, it doubles the Echo damage coming out from the heroes that you hit with it. It's... Honestly, pretty bad. On average, you're going to be hitting maybe like three heroes on a good Echo Slam, right? So it's going to give you an extra 200 damage or so. It's not worth it at all. I think getting a Veil if you want DPS is better or Force Staff for utility. Uh, that said, it's still a good item to have in your inventory, but I think that gold could have been spent wiser. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there as well, but... They're probably just going for the like, we need that massive Echo Slam or we're not going to win a fight anyway. Fair Maybe that's the reasoning, but it may not be the best of reasonings. And oh, Cheese has changed hands as well. Old Chicken is now the one holding it. He has 3.1k gold anyway on top of that as well. Might go for a heart, for example, if he just wants to bulk up. But they are pushing Elder Dragon for misactivation. The good thing for Urshiker is he has a great angle to blink and ravage straight on Old Chicken just by himself. The second ravage hits mostly BK Beast, and Old Chicken still survives. He's going to get the cheese, and he'll be back up in fighting shape. They lose the Lina, and now they're going to lose a little bit more. The Storm Spirit is forced to zip TP out as they leave the Tide Hunter for dead. It's two kills for Energy Pacemaker after committing both of the ravages. Lucky enough for them, they'll have Echo Slam for the high ground defense, but Urshiker's abandoned without TP on this high ground cliff, and Jan can. Uh, I don't think there's a great way back to base here. He's going to be forced to blink down, and by the time he gets to his base, it's probably too late. It's just so sad, and how different this fight could have gone if the cheese was still on the Bloodseeker, for example. But they really tried. They tried their very best to just nuke down this Dragonite. Oh, Stormfield zips in, probably just some harass and nothing else. Oh, there's the blink! Echo Slam hands on free. He gets the one kill onto the Dazzle. Can he get more though? Well, never mind. He's just going to be sacrificed. Does kill off the healer though, so that's something. But now the barracks are going to drop. Dyrus Courier does end up dying. Where did that fall down? Um, right here. That was a little bit of a miss, Mike. They're flying over the Radiant Creeps, but even without their Courier, they should still be able to take down these melee barracks. There's no Tide Hunter for 10 seconds. All Storm Spirit's going to zip in without his team. He's going to lift it up, drop down into a Split Earth, and will die. Buyback from the Earth Shaker. No Echo Slam, however. This is not going to be an easy defense if they can pull it off. The Silver Lightning fan doesn't have a lot of mana, but he does have the Aegis and still holding on to that for about 50 seconds. He's going to drop it now, but the second life for the track is still very dangerous. Energy Pacemaker going to need to back him up, and now the Lesh is back up and running. They'll try to support him with the Glimmer Cape. He's going to live. They'll turn around, and that's a dieback on the Earthshaker. Wits it. Wicked sick, excuse me, for old chicken. And now Tide Hunter is left with no hope of survival. No ravages. He can't even get off the gush on the target that he wants to. He'll turn on to fan, but they're just getting overrun. The Lena isn't going to be stunned out by the split earth, and there is going to be a tower destruction on one of the tier twos, I believe in mid lane, but it just doesn't matter. Energy Pacemaker have a full set of barracks. I have to say, I can't even remember when was the last time that Braveheart actually won a fight themselves. Like early on, 20 something minutes in, they felt like unstoppable with the two three team fights they had in a row but suddenly BKB started coming out the positioning was a little bit better for range pacemaker weren't as grouped up as well and really after that point Braveheart they haven't been able to like perfectly chain in their ultimate it's either the echo slam goes in first and ravage for like a st different fight or the other way around maybe just Laguna Blade and Omni Slash are kind of wasted on the same target over killing somebody just something is always a little bit off for Braveheart yeah, after that five-man Ravage, it's all been downhill from there, and that's really unfortunate. The game was looking so good at that point, but once the BKBs came out for Energy Pacemaker, that's really what the turning point was. The timing on the BKBs has been pretty good, coming out from Lush, Bloodseeker, and Dragonite, and whenever they're up, the physical damage just isn't there because the Jug went for this very early, mid-game-centric item build. I'm not going to say it's a poor choice. Phase Drum, Shadow Blade, the Yasha is reasonable if you're able to keep on fighting at that caliber, but... They never really shut down Energy Pacemaker's farm, and 
Oh, this game is looking very close to over, in all honesty. Unless Braveheart can find a miraculous high ground defense. But if there ever was a team that could pull that off, it probably is theirs with the Double Ravage and Echo Slam. But they're going to try to go onto the enemy side of the map. They're smoked up with everybody, except for the Juggernaut who's farming mid. Yeah, all things considered, though, the lead isn't that massive for an energy base maker, like, craft-wise, but definitely how the fights have been going and how they're just surviving in those fights, it's a little bit better, but if you just look at the numbers, it's about a 10k lead in net worth and XP, about 8,000. So, they're about at the point where Braveheart themselves used to be at. So it can still be done, but Chuggernaut, he just needs more damage for that, and although he has 2.8k gold, quite a bit of it, it's just not enough to get an actual damage item like Basher into Abyssal Blade or something like that. Well, Could you even energy... consider a Desolator at this point? No, I don't think so. I think he needs that Basher if he's going to go for a raw damage item. And honestly, I think he needs a little bit more farm than that to really compete. If you compare his net worth to that of the Lashrak, he's almost <laughs> 9,000 behind. And if he was on the same page, if he had like a Scotty Basher or something, or a BKB Basher, then maybe the Juggernaut can fight, but mm, under the current circumstances, he just needs more. He does have that bash completed, so if they get lucky, maybe that can be a couple of clutch kills. Yeah, but Dragonite, of course, does have the AC as well to just tank yourself up against physical damage in general. And well, they're going in now, but there's the Blink Ravage, only hits one target fan, for some reason didn't get off the BKB. There's the Laguna Blade, but Shallow Grey keeps him alive. Is he gonna be able to make it out with the Omni Slash? Nope, you'll set to find some more time. Lev will go back down. Nope, gets the cheese. Was it the cheese? It felt like, oh no, Bloodstone Charges, never mind. With so many Bloodstone Charges, it might as well have been a cheese. The Tide Hunter is going to end up dying. Now the Juggernaut's under hot pursuit of the Dire Team. Fisher's going to buy him a little bit more space, but pursued out by the Bloodseeker. He's going to be bailed by the Earthshaker, but at the cost of his own life, he'll be smacked down by the Dragonite and Bloodseeker both. He went without the Lesh. Lesh is going to be back up and running in four seconds, and GG's called as Braveheart. It was really a heartbreaking game, no pun intended. It started out so well, the fights were beautiful, especially that first one in the Roshan pit. You can't ask for more. Five man Echo Slam into the Light Strike Array, Echo Slam, everything went right, but after that, they just couldn't pull it together. Everything was too hectic, they weren't focused on the objectives, and they end up falling through. Let's see if they can take it back in game number two. Yeah, I mean, the start was definitely good, but... I'm not sure what went wrong for them, maybe they just aren't that used to playing as a team, playing ahead, just keeping yourself ahead as well while at it, but like you said, definitely a pretty good showing nonetheless. Energy Pacemaker though, you said it in the beginning, you are favoring them to take this series, but two game series, anything can still happen, and even if, should Braveheart lose, there's a long, long group stage ahead of us, six more matches for both of those teams against all the other ones of course, so I'd say it's a pretty solid chance, and you're getting into the playoffs no matter what. You just might get the worst opponent, but that's about it, so nothing is lost, guys. But as I say that, we will be back with game number two in just a few minutes, hopefully. And as always, if you liked it, you can follow us on Hefla TV, Facebook and Twitter, Hefla TV for both. And for the casters, at Coucher for me, at Grandis V for my co-caster. So see you guys for game number two.